Welcome to another one of my videos. Now today I'm going to do something a little bit different and share one of my favourite cooking recipes. Now I do have an allotment, I grow some of my own vegetables and sometimes things like this, this is a courgette or zucchini, end up looking like this. So what can you possibly do with a zucchini or courgette the size of this? Stay with me and I'll share my favourite recipe. So, what we have here are the ingredients to my courgette or zucchini and bacon soup. Now for that, you're going to need some water or stock. I've got some stock that I made in these containers here, but water is fine. You're going to need a kilo or around about two pounds of courgette or zucchini, a large white onion, about one pound or 500 grams of potatoes, three vegetable stock cubes. I like to use a stock pot and two cubes, but you could just use three cubes. And the important ingredient is a small pack of smoked bacon lardons, or you could just use three or four rashes of smoked bacon cut into little pieces. And then they might need some salt and black pepper. So, this is the ingredients for my soup. What we need to do now is we need to chop all of these vegetables up and then we can start cooking. So the first thing we need to cut up is this rather large zucchini or courgette. I've done nothing to it apart from give it a good scrub and we don't peel it. Everything goes in including the peel. So I'm just taking off the ends which are obviously a bit past their best and I should chop them into a bowl there. So take off both ends, make sure we're down to the good, the good part and this just needs uh, about one and a half centimetre cubes so everything needs to be cut roughly even, about one and a half centimetres in thickness so roughly half an inch and it's as simple as just slice down the whole courgette, trying to keep it as uniform as you can. And as you can see, this is going to start turning out to be a large amount. So let's move some of those out of the way for a moment so I can carry on going. And just neaten that bit up. Just throw it to one side. So, all we need to do now is just chop up these into one and a half centimetre or thereabouts, or half an inch cubes. So I'll just normally stack a couple on top of each other and best estimate, we don't need a, a measure for this. We're looking for a uniform little set of cubes. And then I'll just put these into a bowl that's waiting the side here. And continue going. So it's just uniformity. So they all cook evenly. Keep going until you've chopped up all of the zucchini. So we now have all of that zucchini chopped up and as you can see there's a nice large bowl. So it's time to move on now to the potatoes and these just need peeling and cutting to the same sort of size. So just like we did the zucchini, but first we just need to peel them. I suppose you could put the peel in the soup, but I've never tried that. I've always peeled them. It's not worth the risk because this is an, a great recipe for this time of year. So just get rid of the skin. I've also put carrots in here as well in this soup and that goes well so you end up with courgettes and carrot soup and potatoes just like the zucchini needs to be about the same sort of size so if you just cut them roughly one and a half centimeter cubes 
these potatoes are also grown at my allotment so we just do it the same way exactly the same way as we did the zucchini or the courgette just nice little one and a half centimeters half inch cubes of potato got a bowl there to drop them into nothing fancy nothing delicate just throw them all in as close to that equal size as you can get second one obviously I'm trying to film and show you I'll have these pre pre peeled like you do at home the good thing about this it's such a simple soup you don't even need to wait one very large courgette as you saw two large potatoes and one large onion that is the basis so again just bring them all down to about that same size as the courgette or zucchini you can see not being very delicate not being very dainty just get them chopped up so that is That is the potatoes, oh there's the camera there, so the potatoes taken care of, all nicely cubed. And last but not least, we have the onion, again grown in my allotment, doing really well with vegetables. And just like the others, no delicate, no delicate cutting required. And again, nothing dainty, nothing delicate, just get those, get those chopped. down blended liquidized anyway so that's the last of the vegetables so join me in a moment when we start actually cooking so to start the cooking we're going to need a large saucepan or stock pot I've got a very nice soup and stock pot here which is perfect for it we just need a low heat so let's get that lit and have a very low heat at this stage and we'll just add a little bit of olive oil just a little bit to the bottom of the pan there and to the olive oil we're going to add the smoked bacon lardons now the smoked bacon is the secret it does need that smoky seasoning or smoky flavor um, this oil is ready made you could just could just cut up a two or three rashes of smoked bacon and we'll just delicately lightly start to fry that make sure that things don't stick let's give us a few minutes to do its thing make sure they don't burn 
we're looking for just cooked we're not looking to brown them or anything make them crispy just want to get those fats those oils that flavor that smoked flavor coming through very easy to walk away and these will burn I've done that before especially in a stainless steel pan it's not this it's not non-stick so just keep an eye on it and I would say we're not looking for um, well done we're not looking for crispy just heated through and releasing those smoked flavors it is going to boil in the pot with the rest of the soup so that should be fine as you can see it's just releasing its oils its flavors its smokiness so into that we now had the potatoes Again, nothing too wonderful. A little bit of a mix around. So now we've got partially cooked bacon, which are releasing its smoked flavours in with the potatoes. And we have, this is where we add the water, but I did actually boil a gammon joint only yesterday. So I've kept the boiling water from that as a sort of stock. So I'm just going to use some of that, it's got the flavour of the gammon, smoked gammon. And what we're looking for is to only just, only just cover those potatoes. So maybe a little bit more. So we're not looking for pints of water, literally just cover the potatoes there'll be so much water coming out of the zucchini and courgettes it's not needed I'll just turn the heat up let's bring that to a boil at this stage I'm also going to add the stock cubes so the stock cubes are the potatoes are cooking in the stock so I've Use one stock pot. And two vegetable cubes. Now again, if you haven't got a stock pot, that's fine. Just use three vegetable cubes or bullion cubes, I think they call them in the US. Oops, nearly dropped that one. So this is just to get those flavours, get them going in everything from an early stage. And I'll just keep an eye on them, make sure nothing's going to burn. Okay, we'll turn that up a bit more. It's taken a while to come to the boil. Just move them about, keep them agitated, stop them burning. Okay, so that's starting to come to the boil. At this stage, I would add the onion. So just as the so the potatoes have just had a bit of a warming, and at this stage now add the onion. Turn the heat back down. And as you can see, there's very little water in there. 
In fact, I'm going to add a little bit more. We're looking to just about three quarters cover everything. Don't worry that it's not swimming in, swimming in the water. Okay, so in there now you have your stock cubes, your bacon, your onion, your potatoes. I'll just stick a lid on at this point and when the potatoes I've had a couple of minutes we'll come back and add the courgette. Okay so the potatoes have now had about five minutes and in that time I've stirred and made sure nothing is sticking. We've kept the temperature very low so what we're looking for is the potatoes to be slightly softening so just get a sharp knife and just poke a couple of those little potatoes they're just starting to soften they're still quite firm but the knife just starts to go in so this is the stage we had all of those courgettes so again unceremoniously just dump them all in it's quite a lot so you need quite a large saucepan or stock pot this will easily feed three or four Three people as a main course, um, or four or five as a side course, or if you're big like myself, two as a main meal. But you do get a lot for two, so be prepared. An average person should serve four, four people. So, as you can see, that's now looking quite dry. There is no moisture in there apart from what's on the bottom of the pot, that's fine. We do need to make sure it doesn't stick so keep stirring it and we'll just put the lid on and leave it to simmer for about another 10, 12 or so minutes until the courgette is starting to soften. But in that time we need to keep stirring making sure it's not sticking on the bottom. So we shall return in about 10 minutes. So about 18 to 20 minutes have gone by, it took a little bit longer than I first thought. That is because it's all dependent on the size uh, and firmness of the ingredients like the potatoes. These were quite firm potatoes and they're a reasonably large size. But hopefully you can see the amount of water that's come out there now. The, the courgettes and the zucchini have shrunken right down and you can see there's a lot of water. So it's a good job we didn't have no more water at the beginning stages. We just need to check with a sharp knife that they're done. So I'm just feeling them. The knife just goes through them. Still a little bit of texture, but the potato is starting to melt and the courgettes, the knife goes through them with moderate pressure. So at this stage, we need to take them off the heat and blend. So join me in a moment for the next stage. So at this stage we need to actually blend the mix so as you can see it's all nice and soft it's all nice and gooey but we do need to blend how you blend is up to you I like to use one of these little cheap hand blenders I find it's perfect for soups but you can stick it into a blender uh, you could put it into a food processor or I believe you could even strain it through a metal sieve if you wanted but that would be a little bit uh, harder work this is just a basic shop brand blender and it's perfect for the job. So we just need to get it in there now and give it a good buzz, it's going to be very noisy. And we just... We're looking for a nice thick consistency. If it is too thick at this stage you can add more water. So that's down now to a nice, thick, smooth consistency. I do like this to be thick, and this is where we now taste. I don't know if it's showing, but the sort of consistency. So it's a nice, thick, bloopy consistency. But this is where we now adjust the seasoning. Mm -hmm. Plenty of salt, plenty of smokiness, black pepper, 
lots of black pepper we like lots of black pepper in this to the point where you can just sort of feel that pepper zing <laughs> Check again. Mm -hmm. A little more. Plenty of pepper, plenty of black pepper. Adjust the seasoning to suit yourselves. At this stage, it might not look the most appealing. It's, I don't know if you can see, it is thick, it's gloopy. Very, very tasty. So, I shall put some in, serve some up in a bowl and let you have a look at the finished product. And so, the finished product. This is how I like to serve it, in a simple bowl with lots of cheese grated on top, black pepper to the side, and of course, lots and lots of nice bread and butter. Now, I do prefer to keep this in the stock pot until we're ready to use it. I'd make this in the morning time um, to be eaten in the evening. It sits quite happily in the stock pot and then you reheat it and it's even more flavorful after it's sat in the stock pot for a few hours. You can also freeze it, it's great for freezing. So you can make this in advance, four portions, put them in little containers and freeze them and they'll last a couple of months in the freezer, no problem. Take them out, microwave them when you need it. So, this is one of my favourite recipes for courgettes. It's courgette, bacon and cheese soup. Mm-hmm. One of my best ways of using those excessively large courgette. And of course, a nice piece of bread and butter. What more could you want in an autumn's evening? So, hope you enjoyed one of my basic recipes. I'm going to leave it here. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe and hit that notification button for future videos coming very soon. So thank you and goodbye.